Welcome back to our study of Second John as we take an avenue off talking about works. We're looking at the judgment seat of Christ now. As John said, look to yourselves that we receive a full reward. And what we're doing is we're not taking a bunny trail, but we're looking at what the reward is. Where you'll get a reward, to, to understand that a Christian can earn rewards and he can lose them. If I were to leave you just at that thought, without talking about the judgment seat of Christ, where rewards are received and lost, would make this study incomplete. Now last time, number 34, lesson, we began... The judgment seat of Christ. And we didn't get far, but we got far. You need to go back and get the video and the audio, however you're listening. If we pick up now in Matthew 6.20. In the Gospel of Matthew, verse 6.20, But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust does corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amazing. Vitamins and meat in these two verses. What are these treasures for Christians? You'll find out the judgment seat of Christ. Everything you do for Christ, Jesus, our Lord God and Savior, is eternal. You hand out a gospel tract. You give money. You do an aid. You do an help. Whatever you do for Jesus Christ is eternal. Everything done for yourself is a loss. Everything that you earn money to feed yourself and, and give yourself drink and entertainment is a loss because you got the benefit from it. Now, if you've given up on pleasures and dainties that Christ may be praised, You are to live on bare necessities. You didn't go out to restaurants. You didn't. You bought the cheapest food you could in the restaurant. You bought the cheapest food in the grocery store. That would be more money to give to Christ. That would be a reward. You lived your life low key that you can give more to Christ. That would be a reward. But what you've done for yourself is a loss. God must be first in your life. Your motivation is to please God. Will have a lasting effect of a reward. So everything, let's set it apart now. Everything done for God in Jesus Christ is a reward. Everything done for you is a loss. Second Corinthians five ten. Oh I I did this thing, I bought this thing for me, but I gave it to the glory and honor of God. That's a that's a reward. 2 Corinthians 5.10 If you, whatever you've done, gave God the glory, that's a reward. Second Corinthians 5.10 Written to Christians. Let me go to, let's see if Paul has 
verse 1. Second, first, second Corinthians 1. Uh, first, second Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. Unto the church of God which is in Corinth. With all the saints. So Corinthians is written to save individuals. Writing to save individuals, he says in 510, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. In our walk through life, we have done that which is good and that which is evil. And God is watching. And I don't care the stupid song Santa Claus is keeping a list and checking it twice. Because if you were to run over to Proverbs chapter 15 verse 3, it says the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Notice evil comes first. It's not Santa Claus. It is God that's checking the list. It is God that is writing things down. It is God that sees you sleeping. Not Santa Claus. And in our life, what we do, we do good and we do evil. Plain and simple. We will stand and give an account to both evil and good, bad and good. We will give an answer. We serve God. We serve Satan. And we serve self. We have walked the heavenly the worldly and even the fleshly, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's our life. No man outside the Lord Jesus Christ is perfect. No Christian is 100%. And God is not going to judge our bad and leave off the good. He ain't going to favor the good and pass off the bad. Our God is a holy God. And we will ju be judged. 1 John 1 9. Christian, you even being born again. are going to stand before God and you will give an account now from birth from your mother to the day that you were saved now let, let me let me give you an example of my life from the from September 6 1968 the day I was born to April 24, 1987. Them sins are all gone. April 24, 1987, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. All the sins back are gone, are under the blood. April 24, 1987, I was 100% like Christ. Had I taken my last breath <clears throat> at 773 Broad Street at my grandma's coffee table, had I taken my last breath, I would have died in, I don't know if you can really say, complete without sin. If Christ washed away 
I washed all away my sins. And that moment, moment before I said amen, when I asked Christ in my heart, had I died, there would have been no sin. Today is January 1st, 2015. Now, I don't know how many years it's been since 1987. You know what I've done? I've sinned. I've broken the Ten Commandments. There have been times that I have seen women. And Jesus said that the mere thought, I'm guilty of adultery. There have been times, there have been people in my life, I've gotten so angry, I have thought of murder. I'm guilty of murder. I have lied. I have not put God first in my life. I can go on and on and on. There has been idols. Since April 24th, 1987, I have sinned. Now, had April 24th I've died and appeared before the judgment seat of Christ, there would have been no rewards and there would be no loss. I didn't do anything. I didn't. But since April 24th, 1987, there are rewards to be, to be given and there are losses to be lost. Because I have done things for Christ and I have done things for Satan and I have done things for me. I have spent time to, to trim my beard. That, that wasn't done for Christ. Now this shirt I'm wearing, I bought specifically for church and for the Lord. It was for Christ. I don't wear this shirt for anything else but for, for serving God. That's a reward. I got other shirts I wear for myself. They won't be a reward. There'll be a loss. They can cover my nakedness. I'm supposed to cover my nakedness. Okay. Your mouth, your thoughts, your action, your motives, your touch, your smell, your taste, your hearing, and seen will be all judged. Your five senses will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will give an account. Just lay that down. Your five senses will be accounted one day by you. Being saved doesn't escape us from judgment. We don't get a get out of judgment pass card. The righteous holy God will judge those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can a man commit murder, physical murder, with a knife, with a gun, being saved? Yes. Is he still saved? Yes. Will he be judged? Yes. And he'll lose. Reward. He won't gain. Okay. You may escape from hell. You won't go to hell. But you won't escape from being exposed. See, if you are a religious, saved, hypocrite, it's going to say phony. You went around, oh, I love you, brother. I love you, pastor. I pray for you. And you're lying. God will reveal who you were and what you are. 
You may fool us. I may fool you. But you ain't going to fool nobody before God. All right, let's look at something else. We said the touch, the smell, the taste, the hearing, and the seeing. Now, the who, the what, the where, the when, the why, and how you will be judged. The sixth question. Now, when was the last time this message was ever preached from your pulpit? When was the last time your, fit, your pastor stood at that pulpit, the person that led you to Jesus Christ, sat down with you in the Bible, and said, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, your touch, the who, what, where, when, and why of your life, you will give an account. And that puts you as a verb. And with the who, what, where, why, and how in the five senses, that is what you do to yourself, and that is what you do to others. Do you know that a man that drinks and, 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 and gets drunk and ruins his family will be judged what he did to his body with the booze and how he conducted himself to his family? You know that. But do you realize that the Surgeon General says that secondhand smoke is worse than smoking? And you're smoking, you will not only give an account what you did to your lungs and to your body, but you will be also liable for all those that have inhaled your smoke. Those who looked upon a woman and lust after in his heart has already committed adultery with her. Listen, man, you look at that woman and, and the thoughts come. You're charged with adultery. She is too for by the way she is being dressed. She will be accountable too for your eyes looking that direction. See, the Bible says the man and the woman. Okay. So 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, I have sinned, I have sinned since April 1987. He, God, is faithful and just, justice, just, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If I put my sins after I've been to Calvary under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the only way they will be erased and forgotten and forgiven is by, <coughs> excuse me, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sins that are under the blood are gone, are erased, are forgotten. You will not give an account for the sins that you put under the blood. That you repented from your heart. The unrighteousness that you've done that you have put under the blood is cleansed. Thank God for 1 John 1 9. I can be clean. I could probably spend an hour alone with the Lord and seek God about the sins that are unconfessed in my life and have God reveal them to me and walk out of that room clean and righteous again. You need to spend time in the Lord in prayer and seeking God to find out what in your life is unrighteousness and put it under the blood and confess it and get it right.
1 Corinthians 3.11. First Corinthians three eleven. Now for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. So if the foundation of your salvation is Jesus Christ, here you are. If your foundation is a church, this ain't you. If your foundation is in works, this ain't you. If your salvation is because of something you do, this ain't you. If your foundation of salvation is baptism, this ain't you. Your salvation must rest upon Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ alone. For by grace are we saved through faith and not of works, lest any man boast. If your foundation is not Jesus Christ, you are not saved. You are relying on works. Now you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you are saved by the finished work of the gospel that Christ died for your sins, was buried according to the scriptures, and arose from the grave again according to the scriptures. For with the heart man believes unto salvation, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You're saved. Here you are. Here's the foundation. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Alright, since April 24th, 1987, I have been building a building. Since the date of your salvation, you don't need to know the date. Since the place you you were saved, you asked Christ into your life. At least that should be remembered. Would it be your bed? Would it be a church altar? Would it be with your friend? Would it be at the bus station? Wherever it is. Since the day that you have trusted Jesus Christ as your foundation. You have been building a work. You have been going to the heavenly lumber store. And you have been building with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. That is your entire Christian building. There is nothing outside of gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, or stubble. Six building materials are you to build your life. Three you want, three you don't want. Everything in your life is based upon six items. Whether it be missionaries, Big Macs, gospel tracks, gasoline in the car, any sin any sin, church attendance, your conduct with your neighbor, everything you've done since the day you're saved, rest upon six items. Gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble. And we'll look at that. Now, okay. Every man's work. Whose work? The man, verse 11, is trusted in Jesus Christ. So this is a saved man. Every man's work shall be made manifest. One day you're going to know why I gave money to the church. Did I give it just to give it or did I give it for the Lord? You're going to know one day why I stand on, a preach and, on the street and preach. Some days are for the Lord Jesus Christ. Some days are for the flesh. Some days I just have to do it. Some days, you know, that Christian that upset me. It's going to be manifested. Who Stiley Hayward really is and what his character was, no matter what you thought it was, God will make it to be as it is and as for you.
whether you're true or you're faith or faithful or you're a hypocrite or a liar. It will be made manifest, brought out, shown. For the day shall declare it. What day? The day you're judged at the judgment seat of Christ. You will have your day in court, I believe they said. That's where it comes from. Okay, now. Because it shall be revealed by fire. God is going to take everything you've done from the, from the day you were saved. And he's going to put it to a match. He's going to put the match to fire to gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hair, stubble. <coughs> Excuse me. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, when you look at gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, or stubble, what happens to those materials when you put a match to it? Fire. Three will remain. Three will burn up. Can you see what three you want? And what three you don't want? Can you see the three that's done for Christ? And the three that's done for anything else? The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, gold, silver, precious stone. Which he has built thereupon, your life as a Christian, he shall receive a reward. When God puts all your works to the fire, gold, silver, precious stones that remain, you get a reward. So you want to aim for gold, silver, and precious stones, and we'll look at those at some time. Okay? Now, if any man's work, verse 15, shall be burned, wood, hay, or stubble, he shall suffer loss. Now, let's go back to second. Keep your place there. Let's look at second John again. Second John. I'm in first John. Second John. And we want verse 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we had wrought, but that we receive a full reward. A full reward is all the gold, all the silver, all the precious stones that we have done for Christ. Now, if we can lose rewards, then that means... Gold, silver, and precious stones can be turned into wood, hay, or stubble, and you'd be a loss. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. We just work read, if any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. At the judgment seat of Christ, there is a loss and there is a gaining. And John tells us in his epistle, your Christian walk, what you've done for Christ, can be lost. You can do things in your walk as a Christian, and what you thought you were going to get a reward one day, no. You'll watch it burn up. You don't want ashes. You want a remaining. And I've joked when I've done the prison ministry, the fact is, many Christians out there, when God sets that thing to fire, you got so much wood, hay, and stubble, it's going to set off the heavenly smoke detectors. 
The entire place ahead will be because all the smoke, and you can't hold smoke. You can't grab smoke, but you can grab gold, silver, and precious stones. Smoke in the Bible. When the city was set of, and there was a smoke. It was a loss. It was a defeat. Now, let's read something more important. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer a loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet, also, yet so as by fire. You don't lose your soul. That is not hell. You suffer a loss of rewards and not your eternal soul. Don't let somebody say, okay, right there, the judgment seat of Christ. You go to hell or you burn in purgatory. That's not the case. Your gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, you're going to get those six down today. They're going to ring in your ears. The gold, the silver, the precious stones, the wood, hay, and stubble, is what is put to the fire, not you or your soul. Get that. Know that. The loss is not your soul, but the wood, hay, and stubble. That's the loss. That's the loss of your reward. We are all going to have wood, hay, or stubble. If that's one thing down for every born-again Christian is you will have wood, hay, or stubble. Gold, silver, and precious stones, well, that, that's up to you. Now, if your function, if the motive was not for Jesus Christ, it will be a loss, wood, hay, or stubble. We'll get into it more. Your foundation for life and salvation salvation must be Jesus Christ. Not works, not religion, not education, not goods or works. Again, no lost man will be at this judgment. Only born again Christian. Saved by the blood. Those that will be raptured out of the earth. You know, there's coming an event in the future that a church assembly of all believers. You've got countless how many church gatherings all over the world today. And just because you're a Bible-believing Baptist Christian church doesn't mean that everybody in that church is saved. They're not. You may have a pastor that's lost. You may have a deacon that's lost. You may have a wife that's lost. You may have a child that's lost. You may have the janitor is lost. You may have the person that only comes Sunday morning that is lost. But at the rapture, the Lord Jesus Christ will call all believers only. And then the next great event is will appear before the judgment seat of Christ. See, we don't go to heaven right after the rapture. We go to the judgment seat of Christ to receive the rewards, if any, we have done for Jesus Christ. Now, and the eternal afterlife, there's only two options. There's heaven or hell. Plain and simple. There's no purgatory. There's no Lamas. There's no uh, afterlife of coming back and being something else and dying and coming back and being something else. There's just no soul sleeping and, and you know, just dying. That's it. You break down the first thermal law of dynamics. Your Christian life produces holy or unholy fruit. 
You've got good fruit and you get rotted fruit. Revelation 3.15, verse 16, 1 Corinthians 10.21, 2 Corinthians 6.15, and 1 John 2.15, etc. Credit that you will be earned to you be for holiness and not unholiness. Holiness is gold, silver, silver precious stone. Unholiness is that which is burned, wood, hay, or stubble. Either you'll love the one or you'll hate the other. You'll become a servant to the other that you don't want. At which table did you dine in life? And you can fool me. I can fool you. But when God reveals it, and when God reveals it by fire, it will be your true character. See, you can lie to me, but you're not going to lie at the judgment seat of Christ. You will know exactly what I think about you, no matter what I say. You know, there'll be people that realize that you pray for them and they didn't even know. That's a reward. For all the people you pray for, that's, a, that's for Jesus Christ. That's a reward. And they may not even know. But the judgment seat of Christ, it will be revealed. Now, you may have said you prayed for people and didn't. That will be revealed by fire. See, they may think, hey, oh, he prays for me, and you really don't. You'll be called a hypocrite. And that lie will burn. See, you don't know what Christians are outside the church house. When their doors are closed. When you don't see them. God does. He's making a list and checking it twice to see who's been naughty or nice. You better watch out, you better not pout, I'm telling you why Jesus is coming. One day, he knows when you've been good, he knows when you've been bad. You see what I mean? It's all about Jesus. He knows it all. Your pastor may not, you may be fooling your wife. God knows. That affair you've been having, your wife and everybody in church may have never found out. It will be revealed here. Everybody may think you're the model child. It will be found out here. That man falsely accused. Never could defend himself. It'll be found out here. Where's Jimmy Hoffa? He'll be found out by God. How did these pop singers really die? God will tell you. Now, I may not be here to judge the seat of Christ, but I'm just telling you. You can't hide from God. Motive is the only key in the, in the ring. By trying to figure out why did somebody kill somebody else, the pure thing you need is a motive. You can have the clues and the fingerprints and all that, but why is the question. Why was it done? For whom? Was it done? Now here we go with the who, what, where, why, and how. Let me 
I gave money for a family in a church that need help. To God be the glory and honor. But I took that money out of the cash register at work to give it to him. What do you think? I told no one I stole the money. I've got normal food at home, but, you know, if I stop and get me a Whopper, fries, and that would cost me some bucks. You know, I'll have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at home, and that money I, I, I'm gonna, I have in my pocket for the Whopper, I'll give to the missionary tonight at church. You, you, you. Pastor, you are a wonderful pastor. You are so great. You are so wonderful. You said, man, that guy had such a terrible message today. Man, do you see that that tie? It didn't. Man, and look at his children. I mean, come on. Oh, you judge. I'd like the church to pray for Susie. She she just had an accident, and and, and you pray for Susie. You know, there are people in my Bible, their names I pray for. I don't know if they're living or dead. I'm not praying for the dead. God knows. God knows in Caesarea. I mean, if they've died, okay, you know, that prayer goes void. But there are people in my Bible I pray for. And they don't even know. Do you have names in your daily reading of your Bible for, for people you pray for? And you don't need to put up a banner and say, hey, I'm praying for you. You don't have to do that. Did you do it for God? Did you do it for Satan? Or did you do it for yourself? How was it done? According to the word in prayer, or was it done devilish and selfish way? Was it done to get attention? There are churches where they have the, 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 the money march. They march around the building. All those that have a dollar, they march around and put it in the box. All those that have five dollars and those that march around and put it in the box. Those that have ten dollars, they march around. They pay the band and all that. And those that have twenty dollar bill, they put it. And they go all the way up to the very last guy who will have a hundred or whatever he has. And that last guy will get the praise. Oh, look at that. He gave the most. Yeah, but the widow with the with the last two mites, God gave the praise. Our activities, our actions, our work, our verbs, verb is action, people, places, things will all be presented before Jesus Christ. He will judge. Will there be a reward? Will there be a reward? Now next time, we'll get into the materials. Today is the foundation. If your foundation is not Jesus Christ and the finished work of the gospel, that what Christ has done on the cross and the empty tomb, if that is not your foundation, you may not be saved. You need to rest your heart and your soul and your faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let today be the foundation built as you start a true Christian work based upon Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That is the foundation. Now. Prescribe 
Trust in Jesus. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now start doing things in your life for Him. Read the Bible daily. Seek what God wants from you. Build gold, silver, precious stones. We'll talk about those next week, next time. Yes, you got to take care of yourself. Yes, you got to do things for yourself. That's, that's normal. You're, everyone's going to have wood, hay, or stubble. But don't do things for the devil and don't do things for the world. Be honest. Be a character. Be who Christ wants you to be. And you'll find reward. Christian. Maybe you need 1 John 1 9 in your life. Maybe you need to get off alone before God. And you'll be afraid. Because maybe some things you don't want to let go. Maybe you won't want things to be revealed. Maybe some of your sins that you're not only going to have to put under the blood, but you're going to have to go make restitution. Get on your knees. And ask God where the broken fellowship, where the unrighteousness lies. Now the unrighteousness is not going to lie with God. He's holy. See, you know you're afraid that God, if you got down serious like that, God will show you where your sins are. God will show you your wood, hay, or stubble. He won't lift up your gold, silver, and precious stones. He'll show you the stuff that will burn. Yes, you've got the foundation in Jesus Christ. You're safe and secure. You won't go to hell. But John says you can lose your reward. Like I said, we're breaking off a little bit. We're getting into the judgment seat of Christ. Only Christians will be here. Only you will stand before Jesus Christ alone. Not your mother, not your wife, not your pastor. Just you and the one that died for you. You and Jesus, don't know. And everything that you've done in a lifetime. Now, listen, again, expected. You're going to have wood, hay, and stubble. That's, that's common knowledge. Would you have a speck of gold? A dust of gold? A little chip off the old block, maybe? What will the fire reveal about your Christian life? We'll read two more passages and then I'm done. We're going to see John. This is John's epistle. Let's go to 1 John 1 9 again. If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins <coughs> and to cleanse us, make us clean from all unrighteousness. You need to go read Isaiah 1 about our sins being as scarlet and they should be white as snow. You can be clean at the judgment seat of Christ. You can get reward at the judgment seat of Christ. You can put it under the blood and God, the justice, the just, the righteous and holy, will cleanse your unrighteousness. Second John, verse eight. 
Look to yourself. Not the pastor, not your spouse, not your children, not the person sitting next to you in the pew. Yourself. Look to yourself that we lose not those things which we have wrought, your work, but that we receive a full reward. Implying that you can lose. Maybe you were a Christian on fire and you dwindled down, you died out. Don't lose what you've done for the Lord. Don't give up. Get back in it. Get that armor back on. Get the armor back on properly. Serve God unto the rapture or death, whichever comes first. Don't give in to Satan and, and, and the world. And no, you're not perfect. You will have wood, hay, or stubble. But will you have gold, silver, or precious stones? Had you gold, silver, and precious stones and lost them? Don't quit. Go for a new one. And don't give those up. You're building a building, Christian. And God is going to set that building on fire one day and everything that lasts. And what lasts, you'll get a well done, thou good and faithful servant, and earn rewards, which we'll get into later.